Hello, happy woodworkers. Diana here with Heartwood Art. You know, one of the most frustrating things for new DIY woodworkers is looking through a bewildering array of new build plans for their benches and miter saw stations and such. And I want to help you cut through that noise. I want to share this temporary miter saw station that I set up and how working with it helped me come to my final build plans. So let's dive in. Hey, if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and come on over to Heartwood Art where you can watch this final miter saw stand being built step by step. So let me share this whole thing with you. I'm going to step out of the frame. You can see it's just a couple of saw horses and I put two by twos on them to hold this board and that worked out perfectly. I was so lucky that that worked out perfectly for the height. With this Fat Max, it's a little roll around table that I've got and set the miter saw on it. The board's scooted across perfectly for that. And working with this this way, let me know that I really do want a full length thing. You know, some of the plans that I see have wings that come out to hold the expansion pieces on it, whatever. And while that's great, you know, for a compact size and all, now, this is going to be my workhorse. I need a miter saw station to build everything. As a matter of fact, I need a miter saw station to build a miter saw station, you know. And so I decided I don't, I don't want to put up and take down this thing all the time because I've got room in my workshop for that. Another thing I see is sometimes those wings, the way they've got them mounted, they kind of bow and that's not really supporting the wood. So you have to be real careful with that. So that's why those plans are great, but I decided not to do it that way. So another set of plans that I see that's really cool is this ultimate workbench, you know, and they have an inset for the table saw. So the whole bench is the outfeed for that and then an inset for the miter saw where the top of the workbench is what holds the wood. I thought, wow, that's great. One big thing, right? I think that's a little above a beginner skill level, which is kind of where I am with this. So while that's super, I may build that later on. I don't think it's the right build for me at this time. So that's why I decided not to do those plans. Another set of plans that I saw was just build a workbench, set this on top, and then build a shelf up to be the same height as this plate and hold the board with that. And I said, hey, I think I can build that. And so that's why I decided on that sort of build. Now, one of the things I saw with that is they have a very long intake side and a super short outtake side. You know, the miter saw is set way over to one side with that. And what I found was I'm cutting three and four foot boards over here and I, I really needed more room on the outtake side. Now this thing from um, sawhorse to sawhorse is six feet and that's about as far as you can go before you get some bowing with your span boards going across there. Six feet is going to be the limit on that. So that's what I decided and to put this thing in the center. I thought, hmm, am I going to have a problem with bowing over this? And I thought, well, that made a difference in where I'm going to put my brace boards because you know the frame is going to be one big box and you got to have brace boards going across, right? So what I decided to do with this was set this straight down where I can screw it in and put my bracing on each side of it so that these screws don't go into that bracing, right? Another thing that that may give me an advantage for later on down the road. So if I do have any bowing, I can put a vertical strut in there to support it from the bottom of the shelf, right? And that'll give me a great place to tie into it. So that's where I'm going to place my boards for the framing on this to support this weight. Now, another thing that I looked at on this was the depth for it, because as you can see, this is a sliding miter saw and some of it's going to hang out the back, right? Which is fine. So I looked at this Fat Max because this sits perfectly on it and it's a foot and a half, which is great for setting the miter saw, but a foot and a half is going to be a tipping issue, right? And so I said, no, let me look at the feet of this Fat Max down here and it's two feet wide. Most of the plans that I see for this long table are at least two feet. So that's going to be the depth. Now, another thing with this hanging off the back is you got to leave room away from the wall. So if you're looking at this for shop space, you're going to pull it off the wall six feet, uh, six inches to a foot, and that's going to be about three feet total from the front of it. So if you're looking at shop space and it doesn't really matter what your cabinet is, you got to have a little room in the back. Now, <laughs> another thing I looked at was the height, and this comes into play for that. It's a little dust collector. While this works, this thing just spews dust everywhere, so I might want to put a vacuum on this or build one of those 
contraptions over the top as a dust collector. So you want to look at that in your plans too if you don't want to scatter sawdust. It really doesn't scatter it around. It just hits that wall and goes sideways, you know, for that. I plan to put this thing on casters. I'm going to roll it over by the garage door and blow it out that way for the most part. But something you need to consider in your build is how much depth you need if you're going to put a dust collector contraption. Now you can also hook up a vacuum hose to this. I was planning on setting the vacuum at the bottom and I've got an old shop vac that's 24 inches tall. So the way I determined this was I literally laid it out on the floor. I've got three inch casters which actually is three and a half inches tall. The three quarter inch plywood to mount that to. The leg going up and then the top which is going to be three quarter inch plywood. So here's how I determine my height. Hey, it's your bench. Customize it to you, right? So I stood up straight, put my arms straight out and measured. That happens to be about 36 inches. To the top of this is 34. Okay, and so this is fine. So I know that's my minimum on that. And this is about as tall as I want to work. And so I looked at, I laid this thing out on the floor and had a look at it. And yeah, 24 inches spread for that bottom shelf was going to make it 37 inches, which was a little tall because that's going to put the sawdust kicking back in my face and we're not going to have that. So I had a little room to work here. About 36, 37 inches is going to be my max. So let me show you the leg that I made for this. And I actually have a whole video on making these legs too that you can watch. But the tall board is 32 inches. And then the board between the top spanner and where that shelf, bottom shelf, is going to sit is 21 inches. So adding that extra three was going to make the thing too tall. And, you know, the great thing is they have shorter vacuums. You know, they're about this tall. So I could put that on the bottom shelf if I want to, or like I said, blow it out the door. So whichever way works for you. But those are the things that you need to think through with this as well. So I hope all of these tips have helped you think through your build and what plan might work best for you on that too. And like I said, come on over to Heartwood Art. You can see the step-by-step -step build on this entire bench. And I'll see you in the shop.